What's hey, going on YouTubers? This is Mopar Man 1978. I'm out here this evening before the uh, wintery mix comes in tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow. Um, a while back in the live chats and whatnot to Uncle Tony's Garage, David Vizard's live chat, I mentioned that I was going to do a video on the uh, uh, Gunson Color Tune Kit. And um, I mentioned it to David Vizard on his channel in the live chat. And because I wanted to make sure this wasn't like some type of snake oil stuff. Kind of like some of them things that uh, the guys were sending to uh, Uncle Tony to try out at his shop on his vehicle. Uh, to try to get better gas mileage, that sort of thing. And when I mentioned it to David Vizard, uh, through all of his years of uh, tuning and uh, testing engines and... Uh, dynos and uh, flow bench testing and all that sort of thing um, he swears by these kits uh, I believe Gunson was made by uh, made by a guy from over in Britain um, maybe I'm wrong um, but I'd like to think so because it says www.gunson.co.uk um, but uh, let me show you what we got here. This is what's left of the kit, um, of the box, I should say, the rectangular box. Um, it, you can tell how old this kit, I've had this kit for quite a few years. I keep everything in a Ziploc bag now. But uh, it basically shows uh, when you have the correct fuel and air mixture at idle, your flame should be blue. And if it's yellow or orange or purple, that is incorrect. Uh, if it's yellow or orange, that means it's too lean. If it's purple, it's too rich. You want a blue flame, and that's like the perfect setting for the correct fuel and air mixture. And if you've tried to uh, tune your carburetor at idle with this kit, and it still doesn't quite turn blue, but it's close, um, then that would probably be able to tell you that you might be off a little bit on your timing, or maybe it could be the jets and the uh, metering rods or something in your carburetor that might need to be ad uh, adjusted a little bit more to get that perfect uh, uh, fuel to air ratio mixture. But uh, let me show you the kit here. Um, you have this, uh, it's a two piece part that fits onto one another and it's got, you can see the mirror. It's just a plastic mirror with chrome pla uh, electro uh, electroplating on there, chrome electroplating on it. But basically, basically, this is an extension. This part fits on a on. A, and that's what I want to show you here. Uh, this kit comes in. You take your spark plug out. You can take it out on each one on each side, one at a time. Uh, these kits got these uh this screws on to this uh um wire here this flex uh, wire that's basically almost like a spark plug wire it screws into the end of this this basically takes the place of like a uh, fitting that you would use to check your compression but they've taken it one step further i don't know if you can see it down in there let me turn the light on um let's see if we can hit the focus but um, as you can see, there's that electrode in there that's uh, gapped just enough to function like a spark plug. And then that clear uh, housing around that electrode is actually uh, glass or a very tough clear plastic that resists heat and flame. <laughs> and basically you screw that in all the way in and uh you attach this end to the end of your spark plug wire that went to the spark plug on a certain cylinder that you decide to use um and they come in uh 10 millimeter 12 millimeter 14 millimeter uh tapered seats 14 millimeter long reach and 18 millimeter and i have the uh here's here's the kit that i got for 14 millimeter g4074 uh, and then you can see the other kits, and you can use these for lawnmowers, motorcycles, whatever that takes a spark plug for these sizes. Um, but uh, uh, 
But anyway, this thing here goes on. I'll show you real quick. It basically slides on to the end of that. And you can run this or you can run this extension further up if you're in an engine bay that's real tight and dark and you have a hard time seeing. And then you can adjust that mirror to look straight down that tube at the top side of this while the engine is running in idle in park. And you can watch the flame. Uh, it'll be a flash, almost like a, a low camera flash of a certain color. And then while you're watching that flame, you take a screwdriver and you adjust each air to fuel mixture screw on the carburetor, like one side at a time. And uh, you get a little brush to clean all this out. I use a Q-tip just to make sure there's any dust or crud or soot or anything. That, but uh, anyway, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to pause this. this on my phone basically when I pause it it looks like it's been edited uh, edit it and when I come back this will be screwed into the engine block and then I'll have the spark plug wire hooked up to this and we'll start the engine up and get this going and I'll be able to uh, show you how this works so stand by all right guys I don't know if you can see this or not You can see it arcing on the other side of that clear lens. But guys I got the uh, wire and the fitting hooked up and uh, it might be a little too still a little too bright outside even though the sun's going down in the background behind my truck I and mean, there's a over a shadow inside the uh, engine bay here but you can see the little spark going off on the back side of the clear lens and I'm going to try to zoom in to see if you can see that uh, flame igniting. There you go. See that blue flame? That shows that I've got the fuel and ex uh, air mixture screw on this side of the engine, this is the uh, number three cylinder because it's. I just I chose this cylinder because it's more facing at the, an angle back at the camera better than number one cylinder. But let's see if we can zoom in on this. You can see the blue flame. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn the fuel mixture screw clockwise two times. the original setting I had it on. Let's go counterclockwise two turns, two half turns.
so let's focus back in here. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, so basically, it's a little harder to do with the uh, vehicles. Uh, and since it's still somewhat light out, as you can see, the sun's going down back over the hill there. Um, the more the uh, fuel gets mixed and less air, uh, you'll see the flame actually turn purple. That means it's too rich. And then if you go in the opposite direction, turn the uh, fuel mixture screw clockwise, that means you're going to be cutting off the fuel to the air more and it's going to lean out. And that usually produces an orange or yellow flame the further you go. And so when you get the blue flame, you know you're dead on like mine was on this side. Now, now I know this was on a different um, runner, but, uh, and this one set on, the, the number one set on the lower runner, but uh, uh, I figured I'd show you this one because it's more at an angle facing towards the front of the vehicle than the number one is, but uh, I'm not going to bore you with doing the other side because, uh, but uh, if, especially with all the engine noise while this is running, but you basically get the idea of, uh, of how this is supposed to operate. And, uh, and as far as I know, it's with the uh, tuning I did on the carburetor itself, that's the other thing I was going to mention too real quick. Now, if somebody thinks I'm wrong or maybe knows better than me on this, you can correct me in the comment section. But um, Edelbrock, Carbs, and Carters, they use the uh, springs with the different size springs or different uh, how they're soft or firm uh, springs for the metering rods. Uh, and then you got the jet, different jet sizes inside that's just, that little brass uh, jets. Anyway... This is a 600, I bought a uh, 600 Edelbrock tuning kit. And what you do is you get the engine all up operating temps and let it run. And you get the timing and everything set where it's supposed to be. And then what you do is you take a vacuum reading of what the engine's pulling on vacuum at idle. And uh, you take that number, say maybe it's 17, let's, let's use, or 18, let's use 18. Well, you take 18 divided by 2, um, or you can do um, 16. Let's just do 16. Let's go with that. Uh, 8 and 8, 16. So you divide 16 and a half, and it's 8, right? So you, you look on the back of the chart that comes with the tuning kit, and you look for the spring, the colored spring. There's two springs per settings, like you got... A number seven or a number eight and then you got a number ten and a number six and a number five and they'll either be purple or blue or chrome or copper or, or one of them might be a set of them might be orange you just look on the one that uh, comes closest to your uh, divided number which your final number which is uh, number eight and uh, after you've already checked to make sure the jets are correct to go with them springs and the metering rods, you put those number uh, eight, like I used on mine, number eight springs. I think they were um, orange or purple or whatever they were. Uh, that made a big difference in how this operates. It runs. The, 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 anyway. Um, but... Anyway, just wanted to show you this video. There's pro there's probably a much better video than this. There's one on uh, YouTube about the uh, the company Gunson themselves put out, and it shows the guy with a, I think it's like a 1950s or 1960s Volkswagen Beetle, and he's using the Gunson color tune kit to adjust the fuel and air mixture screws on the carburetors for the Volkswagen Beetle engine. Um, they actually use the tubes because of the, the the way the engine bay, how tight the clearance is in the engine bay between the engine and the engine bay. Anyway, a lot better quality video than what I what I showed you guys, but you basically get the idea that you adjust the screws to get the perfect fuel-air mixture 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been out here long enough. It's starting to get, get pretty cold before the snow comes in tonight, tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this video.